Well, good morning, everyone. This is Mike Romali here with the Hurricane Season 2020 update, part of the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion for August 23rd, 2020, recorded around 9.28 a.m. Eastern Time. Well, we have a lot to talk about today, so let's go ahead and dive straight into it. First of all, we have Tropical Storm Laura out here right now approaching the western tip of Hispaniola and Haiti. And this overnight has, you know, weakened just slightly to about uh, 45 miles per hour, uh, but is now trying to reorganize uh, off of Hispaniola and Haiti. And we'll look at that here in a moment. So some pretty non-significant changes in the forecast path right now continues it on this west-northwest path. And we'll look at why that's going to be uh, that west-northwest path here in a moment and why it's not likely to come up uh, any closer to Florida. But right now we have tropical storm warnings that are in effect for, obviously, um, the Dominican Republic and Haiti. Tropical storm watches and warnings for most of uh, Cuba, in fact. And tropical storm watches for Andrews Island over here. And also for Turks and Caicos with some tropical storm warnings as well. And even a tropical storm watch for the Florida Keys. Uh, and that goes all the way up to coastal Miami-Dade County. So... There's tropical storm watches all the way up through near Miami, Florida at the current moment and through Miami-Dade County, uh, although this is likely to stay well to the west of, uh, you know, the Florida Keys. But the only reason why the Florida Keys are under a tropical storm watch at this moment is because, A, for any deviations in the track towards the north, and B, because that wind field could get large enough at... Uh, out at these hours to provide a small risk for tropical storm force winds along the Florida Keys, and that, that will be important. So that's why there's a tropical storm watch in effect for those areas. Now, for the rest of the track, this is expected to then move into the Gulf of Mexico where it could significantly intensify and the Hurricane Center has gone ahead and now has this approaching a category two hurricane with 100 mile per hour winds excuse me, uh, at this very forecast point on approach into Louisiana and then curving once again up into portions of the Midwest United States. So this will be a problem going forward and could be a fairly significant storm here in the Gulf of Mexico going forward with time. If we take a look here at the visible satellite imagery from tropicaltidbits.com, a couple of very interesting things to note. Well, first of all, stop the animation here. We've seen a more consolidated area of convection and showers and thunderstorms today. Uh, right now approaching Haiti and basically going over into portions of the water uh, out here off the tip of uh, Hispaniola and Haiti. There is actually some circulation in here, and it is very possible that there is a small surface center that is located in this general vicinity. And you can clearly see that that is a very vigorous circulation that is kind of uh, positioned right in here. And that's where the Hurricane Center has their center kind of denoted at. Now, there is still some deeper convection all the way out here across uh, Hispaniola, the Dominican Republic, even the mountains over here, and obviously over Haiti. And that's very important because, uh, again, this is going to be providing, these training bands will be providing some flash flooding concerns as we go forth with time. A couple of other things to note that are interesting here. First of all, we have a much larger ex uh, expansive cirrus flow today. If we switch that to the, well, we can't switch it, never mind. Uh, but the water vapor satellite shot would show much of the same thing here with a pretty expansive outflow pool on every single side, basically. And that is very important because that helps to ventilate the storm and really helps to uh, cause a consolidation within our our area of thunderstorms and this is since this area is going to move over water here fairly shortly it is possible that we get a short bout of actual intensification uh, before kind of moving into uh, Cuba and that is very possible and you know it's not exclusively likely but it's very possible because this does seem to be very vigorous and uh, unfortunately though we haven't been able to get hurricane hunter flights that have been able to go down in here because of land restrictions and uh, you know uh, other things like that but it is very interesting we'll have to watch this here uh, as it continues to move off towards the west northwest here and then eventually impact Cuba later today. 
One other thing to note, again, besides the outflow, is the northern side of it, while it has been somewhat devoid of convection, there is some shower and thunderstorm activity that is trying to kind of pivot around from time to time. And that's very important because look at what the recon found. This is the uh, NOAA uh, reconnaissance aircraft that was in there earlier, and they just actually left the storm environment. But this is that area of deeper convection right here, and you notice that right now we have a fairly strong area of strong winds on the north side of this. And the reason for that is because your easterly trade winds are not only blowing across here, but they're also getting enhanced a little bit by land friction, and that is also causing this kind of anomalous flight level winds to be fairly high. And this is something to note, and it is a little bit something of importance because this is still going to remain the primary flow over Hispaniola and Haiti uh, over the next while. And you're still going to get some of the cyclonic wind to occur while the main center, maybe somewhere over here, will have to watch to see if there might be kind of a new launching point and a new center reformation if uh, additional thunderstorm activity can occur on the northern side and that is possible but it looks like we've started to see more of that consolidation towards the south and right over basically right over haiti going over cuba and this is what more and more of the modeling is starting to suggest today and that's very important kind of going forward with time now this is kind of one of the forecast graphics that I put together myself, but this kind of explains the relative uncertainty regarding tropical or yeah, tropical storm Laura. It's made its journey across, you know, Puerto Rico and most of Hispaniola. It, you know, it hasn't had a problem going over those, uh, you know, islands in, in in those mountainous areas. So far, there has not been any additional centery formations, but it is still entirely possible the main center has actually kind of come across and could have actually ended up joining forces with the mid-level center and actually vertically aligning in this area right in through here. It is possible that it could have vertically aligned last night in this morning because you are starting to see a better rotation, healthier rotation, and you're also getting more cyclonic spin that is very evident excuse me, it's very evident in the radar present or in the satellite presentation that we have a fairly decent cyclonic curvature and cyclonic spin in your low pressure center would probably be somewhere in this vicinity. That's entirely possible that we have had more of a consolidation this morning. But there, it, the center reformations to the north or south are still possible and it is still possible to have that happen. Now, Laura is beneath a Bermuda high and a, a subtropical ridge, which is this area of high pressure generally off towards the north of the storm right here with winds that are guiding the storm towards the west or northwest. And that is these kind of bluish arrows right here. That's representing that the wind flow is actually coming out of the west and northwest. That's what's helping to guide this storm towards the west-northwest here. And that's also one of the main primary reasons why this is not likely to come up and just kind of dive into Florida or, you know, kind of come right across the peninsula or even, in fact, just move basically due west or southwest. So that's why those options are not likely uh, and, and probably not even going to happen. And... This west-northwest flow around the subtropical ridge will basically be continuing for the rest of the storm's lifetime as a tropical cyclone. And again, that is because the subtropical ridge is going to start to build in over top of both Marco, which is denoted here, and Laura, which is going to help to guide it off towards the west-northwest and not allow this thing to recurve something like that. <clears throat> that solution is becoming less and less likely. Let me take a drink of water here much better. That is why uh, we are not going to see this motion off towards the north and northeast eventually, um, you know, occur because that subtropical ridge is going to be building over top of, this, uh, of both storms. Now, the biggest question remains as to how much land that Laura is going to travel and what the inner core structure is going to look like once it comes back over water. Uh, with that inner core, with what inner core there is at the moment, it is possible that a center reformation could occur towards the north, 
which is kind of this orange is dashed line right here. And also uh, it is possible to have a center reformation to the south, which is this dashed pink line in through here. The solid red line is basically the mean track here from the National Hurricane Center. That's kind of what they are forecasting. So it is possible to have a difference of, you know, a couple hundred miles, uh, even still at this at this time, because if a center reformation does occur further to the north, that has a further north a further north launching point from there. And that launching point basically would guide it more on a northwestern, west northwestern trajectory, way farther southern, uh, you know, center reformation would guide it also west northwesternly. And these would have big uh, track and intensity changes here over the next few days or so. And that's very important. This would have some important changes to both the track and intensity. And after that time that it's coming off of Cuba, we have to watch for whatever possible impacts Tropical Storm Marco, which is denoted here, may have on Tropical Storm Laura. It is possible that these two could sort of rotate around one another uh, or cause the storm to slow down or speed up. However, it looks like that Marco will be, will be able to have little to no impact uh, on Laura as it moves off towards the west-northwest. Either way, though, and, and I really denoted this, that Laura looks to be a storm to watch uh, as it enters the Gulf of Mexico and could quite well possibly intensify pretty rapidly once it moves into the Gulf of Mexico. But again, it's all denoted here on what sort of inner core structure and, and what the structure of Laura actually looks like when it moves back over water. And again, whatever time it has over water now is kind of important because the western tip of Cuba is basically the shredder almost to tropical cyclones. And, and if it goes right over, while it's not likely to completely kill the storm off, it could significantly hamper uh, what we have going for the storm right now. So it is possible that we may see a disruption coming in the form of less convection and less healthy outflow uh, due to the fact that this is going to be the western tip of Cuba and it is known to shred, much like the Hispaniola Mountains, it is much known to shred tropical cyclones as they move over that area. But one of the main reasons why Laura is not likely to dissipate um, completely over these areas is because if you look here at the A50 vorticity product, this is the spin in the atmosphere about 5,000 feet off the ground. These are the reds and whites. Uh, that's your higher cyclonic spin at the 5,000 foot level. And you can see that we have a fairly decent cyclonic spin here with Laura. And again, that is a very vigorous circulation that is moving uh, over these areas. And this is unlikely to significantly kill off the storm as it moves over Cuba because of the simple fact that this is a very vigorous circulation and it is going to try to keep generating these thunderstorms as they move west-northwest here. And then eventually, once this pops out over the Gulf, uh, this could have some consequence to strengthen fairly quickly as it generally moves west-northwest. Now again, you can also see that there is some vorticity lobe here on the northern side of it, on the northeast side of Cuba. And if this tries to consolidate, which is highly unlikely, but if it does try to consolidate, this would also have intensity and track changes uh, with it as well. So that's very important because this would have implications going down the road for Laura. So while the track looks set in stone, it in all reality is not all set in stone. And there's a lot of factors that are going to play heavily into it. And we can see this kind of happening here on the GFS forecast. This is, again, the 850 of vorticity product. And we just kind of move this out here. And again, it looks like that on the GFS model, first of all, Marco's making landfall uh, near the eastern tip of Louisiana. We'll get to that here in a moment. But the subtropical ridge is basically now beginning to build in over top of Laura, and it is allowing it to go more west-northwest. This is going to allow that storm motion to continue, but you notice how this is coming off the western tip of Cuba as it's still got vorticity, uh, but it's a lot less than what it does uh what it does currently. However, that moves it eventually into the Gulf of Mexico where it uh, significantly intensifies Laura in this general vicinity. And that is a certain likelihood that it could happen and, and intensify fairly quickly. But again, it's based on what inner core structure that we have. Now, if we look here at the H-Wharf, excuse me, 
If we look here at the H Wharf, this will kind of give us a better idea as to kind of what to expect here with Tropical Storm Lore. First of all, this is the 12Z or 8 o'clock uh, an a forecast point here and again it's initializing at about a thousand two millibars but it is initializing it way off towards the east and northeast of where our possible center could be and it's very hard to determine that eventually this kind of just jumps around you, you kind of see it that it, it kind of jumps back over that area uh, but in all reality, this area that is here now could be over this area uh, by about 15 Zulu this afternoon. Uh, that is actually quite possible that it could be jumping and this is still a little bit behind unless this is the actual surface center. But regardless, the H Wharf does kind of bring this on the northern side here of Cuba. And one interesting thing that, that it's doing is you notice all of the stronger winds that it's kind of uh, suggesting on this northern side here. And that is indicative of what we've seen with the reconnaissance aircraft that this is a stronger wind maximum over here on this side. So the H Wharf does have this kind of nailed down. Now, as we kind of progress throughout time, you notice how this ends up kind of succumbing to the mountains over here, pressures of about 1,003 millibars. It's over the western tip of Cuba, well, now really the central portion of Cuba. And again, it's almost over water if this surface center was to be correct. And one of the main things here is that Cuba in itself, <clears throat> excuse me, is not a very wide area. It's a very narrow area. So we're talking uh, that if we do get the center to be a little bit more over water, this is kind of where the uh, H wharf kind of shows it, uh, or whether or not, and, and this would also kind of indicate that maybe there's some mid-level uh, and low-level uh, decoupling here, which would be another significant problem regarding the, uh, the Laura situation. Uh, but if this indeed is a low-level center, it could be just a far, a little bit far track more this way. That is entirely possible, and we'll really have to watch that as it kind of continues off towards the west-northwest here. Uh, but regardless, this is still that kind of wind maximum up there to the north. Eventually, it's just 1,008 millibars, and you notice how long it takes to generally organize it compared to what we had uh, the, uh, yesterday, or basically at the zero Z run with 967 compared to 987. So this takes it a little bit more time to develop out here. Now, eventually, if you kind of skip forward enough, it does bomb it out and uh, strength significantly go undergo rapid intensification once it gets a, a better inner core structure. But this would significantly degrade the inner core structure in the tropical cyclone uh, if the H wharf came to fruition. And for what it's worth here, this is the H-Bond, and again, it's mainly showing much of the same scenario, uh, except the inner core structure is a little bit better organized. It's able to intensify a little bit more uh, right off kind of the gate of coming off the coast there, and then it deepens it fairly quickly into an intense tropical cyclone uh, after that point in time. So the h wharf sh or the h mon rather, is a little bit better organized and it is actually kind of jumping these centers around from time to time. And that is possible that this could still happen. So it is going to be something that we'll have to watch here uh, over the next little while. So that's all for Laura. Now, onto Tropical Storm Marco, which is almost a hurricane with sustained winds of 70 miles per hour uh, with gusts up to about 75 or hurricane intensity, pressure down to 993 millibars, moving generally towards the west-northwest here at about 13 miles per hour. If we take a look here at the reconnaissance aircraft that was in there from, or that is in there now, uh, again, pressures of about 993 millibars here. Again, some, you know, uh, you know, some of the drop zones show a little bit higher, some show lower. You notice that there is a decent amount of convection around our storm right now, but you notice what's actually occurring is there might be what's now starting to undergo a little bit of a vortex decoupling from vertical wind shear. We'll look at that here in a moment. But regardless, the storm is moving almost west-northwest here, and it is still producing some strong winds at the inner core, and even tropical storm force winds all the way out here off towards the north and east of the center. 
Off towards the west, though, there is virtually almost no winds that are in the tropical depression or even tropical storm force uh, range, and almost virtually no convection across that area either. So this is actually because of that vertical wind shear and dry air in the Gulf of Mexico, uh, basically being reinforced by the vortex decoupling structure potentially. Now, this is something also that I kind of came up with, and this is a tropical storm Marco. And again, right now we're looking at uh, what's basically going on. First of all, we have this general trough of low pressure that's kind of digging in across the central and southern United States right now. And the bottom of our trough axis is denoted in this yellow dashed line in through here. That's our trough axis, and the solid yellow line is our trough. And what's going on is that the wind shear, we have some competing flow because what's actually occurring right now is that Tropical Storm Marco is dealing with some vertical wind shear, which is in this pink circle. That's basically the, the vertical wind shear uh, zone in through there. The uh, main reason for this is that we have a trough that is uh, north of Marco that is trying to steer it more towards the north and northeast which is indicative of the pink lines, the pink arrows in here. Because this trough is digging into the north and the bottom of our trough axis is here, we actually have a more north and northeast flow that is coming out from the, the basically the southern regions and over Mexico. And this trough is actually trying to steer the storm more off towards the north and northeast over here. However, we also have a ridge of high pressure and this big uh, subtropical Bermuda high that is off towards the north up here with our surface winds at, at the lower levels in the dark blue lines uh, that are trying to push the storm more off towards the west-northwest. Basically the same feature that is trying to steer tropical storm Laura down here uh, coming off of Haiti and Hispaniola. That's the same feature that's steering uh, Laura. However, because Marco is a little bit deeper in the atmosphere, it is basically feeling both the low level and the upper level flow coming out of the atmosphere. And this is what we're taking a look at here is that some of this vertical wind shear uh, is competing with Tropical Storm Marco and it's kind of creating a battle between which way the storm wants to go. In this red line is based, the red solid line is where the National Hurricane Center is forecasting Marco to go. However, since a stronger storm would feel more of a north and northeast flow, it would tend to go further towards the right of the track, which is in this red dashed line in through here. And yes, it is possible that the Florida Panhandle may have to deal with impacts from Marco. While a weaker storm and a more shallower storm feels does not feel this mid-level and upper level flow, but instead feels and gets tugged more by this lower level flow in the teal dashed lines, which is right here. This would tend to make the storm go further off towards the west, which is left in this case, and drift it more towards Texas. And that is a for sure possibility, but we've seen some model convergence today. And one way to take a look at that here is the GFS forecast. This is for specifically the tropical storm inner nest of Marco from the GFS. And what we're looking at here is the eight, uh, the basically the 10 meter winds here. And you can see where Marco is right now, pressure is about 995, uh, about 12Z this morning or around 8 o'clock in the morning. So it is possible that this might be just a little bit higher of intensity or actually higher pressures on the GFS. However, we move this forward and as through time, where's that west-northwest been? It doesn't occur. Instead, the GFS is more off towards the right of the track here and shifts it more in towards the far eastern tip of Louisiana and into Mississippi, Alabama in the extreme western Florida panhandle in through this region. That would bring more of a threat to the right of the track because vertical wind shear is going to push this uh, basically most of the convection off towards the northeast and east of the center which would put its worst impacts in through this vicinity in through here. However, on the H-wharf for Marco, it is showing the storm struggling 
and shifts it almost into where the GFS does before kind of slowing the halt, uh, basically slowing down the progress, the forward progress of Marco as it approaches uh, the coastline. So this is something we'll have to watch. Now, again, it's not uh, likely to intensify significantly because there's vertical wind shear. Uh, in part due to this upper level trough in three here and these different competing steering flows in this general region. So there's a lot here that we're really going to have to monitor as time goes on. Either way, we are likely to have two storms to talk about. First of all, with Tropical Storm Marco that is likely to approach somewhere uh, along the uh, Gulf, Gulf Coast states here. Uh, anywhere really from the western part of Louisiana all the way to the western, extreme western Florida panhandle has to be monitoring the progress of this. And we do have uh, hurricane warnings that are, that are in effect for portions of the Louisiana coastline as this is expected to still remain a hurricane on approach into those areas. And with Tropical Storm Marco that is likely to become a strong hurricane in the Gulf of Mexico somewhere, anywhere from Texas all the way through the western Florida panhandle as well, needs to be monitoring the progress of Tropical Storm Laura. All right. Now, that being said, that is going to be the end of this longer update today. Uh, I, will, of course, will have another video update later uh, this afternoon going over the latest uh, afternoon model runs and uh, everything that Recon has found and everything else like that. If you guys want to support what I'm doing, make sure to subscribe to the channel. We just hit over a thousand. I really appreciate each and every one of you because you are what makes this uh, channel possible and makes uh, situations like these uh, more easy to do for me. And of course, I will be giving updates on Twitter at micromelly one Go follow me there. Links will be down in the description down below. All right. Hope you all have a great rest of your after uh, morning and early afternoon. I am Michael Romali. I'll talk to you guys again some more later this afternoon.